Hello and welcome back to another in another video and another severe weather coverage. Well, we are watching this new system break out into the plains and we saw tornadoes yesterday. We're going to see even more today in the regions that just got hit hard by tornadoes. Including Andover, Kansas, which got hit with a supposed EF3 tornado just a couple days ago. So, starting off with the Storm Prediction Center page, we have enhanced, slight, and marginal risks. Starting off with our enhanced risks across 48,000 square miles and a population of 4 million people. This includes Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wichita, Kansas, Springfield, Missouri, and Norman, Oklahoma. We have slight risks across 87 thousand square miles and a population of 4.3 million people including Little Rock Arkansas Wichita Falls Texas Lawton Oklahoma Broken Arrow Oklahoma and Fayetteville Arkansas finally we have our marginal risks across 218 thousand square miles and a population of 18.9 million people including Dallas Texas Memphis Tennessee Fort Worth Texas Kansas City Missouri and Arlington Texas. So we do have a higher percent chance of tornadoes today than yesterday and we even saw a tornado watch posted for much of West Texas and eastern New Mexico yesterday. That was at a 5% chance of tornadoes. Today we're seeing a 10% or more. Uh, it could increase as the day goes on and conditions start to change. But at the moment we have 10%, 5%, and 2% chances of tornadoes. But let's start off here with our significant severe threat, which is a 10% or greater probability of EF2 through EF5 tornadoes within 25 miles of a point, which is basically the 10% range here. So in this region, if you're going to see tornadoes, most likely they're going to have the strength of EF2 through EF5. So, let's start things off here with that significant, severe, and 10% risk. I'm going to lump them together at about 27,000 square miles and a population of 2.3 million people, including Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Wichita, Kansas, Norman, Oklahoma, Edmond, Oklahoma, and Midwest City, Oklahoma. 5% chance of tornadoes across 32,000 square miles and a population of 2 million people, including Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wichita Falls, Texas, Lawton, Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and Joplin, Missouri. Finally, we have our 2% chance of tornadoes across 72,000 square miles and a population of 3.5 million people, including Springfield, Missouri, Abilene, Texas, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and North Little Rock, Arkansas. Winds roughly correlate to the enhanced slight and marginal risks. Well, let's just go through them. 30% chance of strong winds, which is above 58 miles per hour. Uh, that's what they classify as strong winds, quote unquote. But 30% chance across 25,000 square miles and a population of 1.4 million people, including Springfield, Missouri, Joplin, Missouri, Rogers, Arkansas, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, if I said that right, and Bentonville, Arkansas. We have a 15% chance of strong winds across 96,000 square miles and a population of 5.7 million people, including Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wichita, Kansas, Norman, Oklahoma, and Wichita Falls, Can Texas, not Kansas. 5% chance of strong winds across 169,000 square miles and a population of 13 point, let's call that point 0.1 million people, including Memphis, Tennessee, Kansas City, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, Overland Park, Kansas, and Kansas City, Kansas. Finally, hail corresponds, so enhanced risk is about that 30% chance or that 30% chance roughly correlates to 10% chance of tornadoes. 15% chance is approximately that slight risk and that marginal risk is 5% chance of hail. But we do have a significant severe risk 
which is a 10% or greater probability of 2 inch diameter hail within 25 miles of a point. So let's go over that together. 55,000 square miles and a population of 3.8 million people, including Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wichita, Kansas, Norman, Oklahoma, and Wichita Falls, Texas. You can see here that this main area here between Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas is our main area for general severe thunderstorms for the day today. Let's go over our track and timing of these storms. So right now we're seeing uh, some thunderstorms popping up in Texas, but throughout the day today, we will see this low pressure system start to move out into the Kansas, Oklahoma region. Now, as that happens, we'll start to see thunderstorms starting to fire up here around, let's call that 2 a.m. So before this video is even released, we could see some thunderstorms. But later in the day, we could see uh, the main set of thunderstorms, which start to fire up here. Let's call that around 3 p.m. Central Time and move into uh, regions of the main area here, that 10% hatched significant severe area around that time. So they start to fire up, and we can tell from the tight gradient of this tornado risk here you can see that it goes from 2 to 5 to 10 to that significant severe in a very short amount of space that's because uh, these thunderstorms are firing up in the right location with that cold air coming off the rockies you can see some snow here in nebraska that warm moist air getting pulled up out ahead of that cold front from the gulf of mexico and we see areas such as Oklahoma City and Tulsa and Wichita right in that area Wichita start to see the impacts almost immediately at around 4 p.m. Central and we can see some of those thunderstorms continuing to fire up here kind of another round starts to fire up right around 10 p.m. Central time in regions like Tulsa Oklahoma City uh, Joplin, Missouri, even Springfield, Missouri, right along that uh, I-44 corridor, starting to see some thunderstorms in that region. Now, Kansas City starts to see some thunderstorms around that time period as well, uh, much less of a probability of those being severe. I think the main target for that will be uh, just typical strong winds. But the hail and tornadoes is going to be confined uh, to this general area here in southern central Kansas and central Oklahoma. As that second line of thunderstorms fires up, we see some more hail from that mostly. And then that starts to work its way east. And that hail could even be in areas such as uh, northwest Arkansas uh, and areas like Fort Smith, uh, Fayetteville, maybe even down into Little Rock where you could see some strong winds, some hail as well. So here's our mixed layer cape, which is the energy for thunderstorms to form. And you can see in this region, we start to see a lot of energy popping up here. This is now about, let's call that 8 p.m. Central Time, you can see three to four thousand joules per kilogram of energy mostly in Oklahoma and that is why that second uh, main line of thunderstorms forms there because there's so much energy it's going to get utilized at some point here's our supercell composite index which just shows the probability of supercells this is on a 1 to 50 scale and you can see here that the supercell composite index, right where that low pressure is, you can kind of see the wraparound here, and almost it's zero after that cold front. But you can see areas uh, even up into the 30s, the 40s, potentially. Uh, some of these areas getting really high on that index, which means that there is a high probability here. This is right around, let's call that... 6 p.m. Central Time, 
we have a wide region, including Oklahoma City and Tulsa, in this mix of 30 to 40 and 40 plus. And that continues as that second line of thunderstorms fires up. And you can see that those supercells are going to be forming in that region as that supercell composite index shows that they are likely to. Finally, our significant tornado parameter, which is basically a 1 to 10 scale, and it could even go above 10, which shows like a very, very good chance of tornadoes. But usually, 1 to 10 scale of the chance of tornadoes forming. And you can see in our region that 10% risk area. Let's go back here. You can see right in here should be that highest risk. And you can see that right here between, let's call that, uh, let's say 4 to 7 p.m., we could see uh, numbers on this index go from as high as 4 to as high as 8 or 9 uh, in some of these regions. And you can see these dark browns, that is above 6, which is extremely likely that tornadoes are forming in this area. So you can see that if we're going to have tornadoes, they're going to be in this region here of those darker browns. But that doesn't mean just because if you're in a gray area, which is less than one, that doesn't mean there's definitely not going to be tornadoes in your region. It does mean that there's a less likely possibility of tornadoes compared to areas in this brown here. But you can see here that Tulsa and Oklahoma City are going to be right in that mix for potentially a long period of time. And if we line this up here, 0z, uh, and compare that to the Supercell Composite Index, they line up almost perfectly, where you have those supercells, that high percent chance of supercells, you have a high likelihood of tornadoes, which, uh, just putting two and two together, if you're going to be seeing those thunderstorms, there's a very high likelihood that those supercells rotate and develop that funnel cloud, funnel cloud drops down, and you get a tornado. So we do have a very real likelihood of multiple strong tornadoes in this region, and you can see that this all starts to die down here around midnight uh, central time as the second line of thunderstorms moves through northwest Arkansas and kind of dies off. But that is all I have for this severe threat. This may be uh, one of the most violent severe threats that we've had so far this year uh, as we're really starting to get into prime tornado season. Uh, late April through, let's call that early June, you have those ingredients in the right spots uh, and we're starting to see that shift. Whereas in March and April, we see a lot of severe weather occurring in the southeast now we're seeing a shift to tornado alley the classic tornado alley that we've seen uh throughout you know media and cult, uh, pop culture for a while uh compared to that new tornado alley in the southeast so now we're shifting into uh let's call it classic tornado alley from the new tornado alley and that is where we're still seeing the most dangerous tornadoes still occur in that classic tornado alley, and that is definitely going to be a possibility today. So, please stay safe. I know that in many of these regions, uh, they're no stranger to tornadoes and tornado season, but that doesn't mean that any tornado could not, isn't deadly if, even if you are prepared, just have a plan in place and... Uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best, but thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.